Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Smash Talk podcast. Unfortunately, usually Edmund would be the one doing this, but he's not here with us this weekend. Um, he was over at Port Priority, so if you caught him on the mic <laughs> and you're following him, good stuff to you. Uh, he'll be joining us for the next episode. So don't worry about him. He's not gone or anything. He'll be, he'll be back. Um, but of course, he's uh, actually been fired. He's, <laughs> he's, no, he's no, gone. No, fired man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he, he's good. He's good. He, he got lot. He got stuck in um, Seattle for a little bit, unfortunately. Yeah, but, he has hey. other priorities on hand. You know how it is. Yeah. Um, but if you, if you guys are wondering, <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's port priority, unfortunately. I wouldn't even call it stuck. It looks so beautiful over there. Yeah. It does. It really it actually does. Actually, looks gorgeous. Um, definitely much better than. Actually, you know, it wasn't hot as hot as it was today in SoCal. Usually, like SoCal's pretty hot, but today it wasn't hot at all. Like I, I noticed, it was like uh, it was like seventy seven degrees. Not I, where I'm living. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was okay. I thought it was fine. I was like seventy seven degrees. It's all good. Um, I'm surviving, but hey. Anyways, thank you guys all for joining us for another episode. Of course, join to me on what is my left, probably your right hand side, is of course Lux. Up in the corner is going to be uh, Strize, the ever quiet one. And of course, joining us on uh, as our special guest up, on guys? this podcast, please welcome Arisdale for joining us. Hey. Um, no, nice to be here. Thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate no, it. No, thank you for joining uh, thank us. You for, thank you for filling in. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Glad that we can discuss. This is actually like my favorite thing to do is just sit down and talk with people, discuss uh, important topics or answer chat, all that. So uh, I think it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, uh, there, there's, a lot, there's, a, there's a lot to definitely dissect. Uh, for those of you guys wondering, like it's been a couple of days since the Nintendo Direct. So we obviously missed that time slot a little bit, right? With the Nintendo Direct already happened. We got Banjo's surprise. Um, turns out that leak from Neo Geo was actually true. We did, I'm sorry, not from Neo Geo, from SNK is actually true. We're getting uh, an SNK representative in Terry. There's like, there's like so much that basically happened all in one day that nobody would have predicted. And honestly, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's some stuff, dude. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so that's gonna be our first topic, honestly, is the, the Banjo surprise release. And honestly, everything that came along with it. Um, <laughs> Banjo's finally out in the wild. Uh, a lot of what? people love him. The gameplay of the character is great. People are seem to be enjoying him really, really much. Um, I want to start off really quick because I'm going to start with Strides. what's your opinion on Banjo? Oh, I, 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 so, I, I, I want to know. I want to know how you feel in general. <laughs> Straight from the not mouth bad. of Strides. Let's go. So, so basically, uh, Banjo is not the type of character I am um. good with at all. But he's really fun to play, mm -hmm. honestly. And I think that's. I think a lot of people feel that way about the character. Like, he just feels really quirky and, like, weird, quirky. but he just, I don't know, he, he feels really fun to play regardless. I don't know, like, his uh, animations are all really good. Uh, he's really faithful to how he is in the games. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, he, he just, he really fits in the game. It's, it's, it's so my, that's basically Man. my opinion on it. <laughs> Am I like cued in to talk, or can I just like no, say like my have, opinion? I mean, Yo, just throw it out there. As throw soon as you know. he said quirky, <laughs> I was like, hold up! Like Banjo feels like he's been in Smash. Like I know a lot of people have been saying it, but he actually feels um, great in my opinion. I feel like he just was like perfectly implemented into the game. Like it's actually like he's so fun. Everything from the Banjo uh, Kazooie, Banjo Tooie. If you guys have ever played the games. Mm -hmm. uh, it, literally the moves that they have for him with Kazooie and everything. Um, I think it's sick. I think that literally is probably one of my new favorite characters in the game. And I think he has great moves. Um, he's super viable. I feel like he's good. He's fun. He's, I'm a little he's, mixed not, fun. he's not quirky at all. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel I like know. there is some quirk, like, you know, in, in one respect of the word, like quirk, just in the different, I think the main difference that, separates banjo from a lot of the other characters that we've seen that makes him very compelling and will kind of have some ramifications of the metagame is going to be his side special the uh you know the gold feathers uh oh yeah you know the the invincible uh, juggernaut dash that he could just go through and uh, destroy <laughs> people with um Pretty you know good. actually it, it's funny i made a tweet <laughs> that i was a little skeptical on the power of that move just in the context that you know it's it looks it has counterplay you can shield there's lag to it, and, it, you know, I, I was almost of the opinion that it would have been a better design choice to make that move maybe have longer end lag, 
and not really worry about or I, and have like the feathers regenerate over time or something like that instead of it being you know mm -hmm. you shoot five and then it's over for the stock um but that being said you know the uh the move i feel like is going to be very polarizing or you know kind of defining of a lot of matchups especially a lot of the zone breaking uh, options that he's going to have is kind of one of the true uh bust through every projectile zone break uh, characters that we're going to have in the uh, the meta game. I, I kind of yeah. agree. Um, Banjo was kind of given to us a surprise release. I really didn't see him coming that day. Um, I don't think anybody did. Everybody like knew, like, oh, he's coming in fall, and like the fall season doesn't start until like the end of this month, uh, which is the 21st, which is the fall equinox. Um, I thought it was going to be like a surprise Halloween character, uh, just because like the character has a witch, It'd be really cool. Like, oh, yeah, we're getting Banjo, like, around Halloween. And all that Mad stuff. Monster Mansion shout out. Yeah. So. Right, right, right. I, <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I, that was my prediction. Like, we're probably going to get him in October, so not too far. Uh, we may just get, like, some gameplay and a little bit of a trailer and then maybe an introduction to the next character. But I felt like Sakurai was like, okay, the character's pretty much all set, and then they just release him to the wild and see how he's going to do. And then maybe make some balance changes around that. I kind of like this mm -hmm. idea of, like, Hey, we have a character. Maybe he's not that ready yet. Maybe he is. Um, let's just release him now, and then we'll balance things as they go. I feel like they kind of do that with Overwatch. Um, I, I you guys, if if you've been watching for the show for a while now, like five episodes in, I've mentioned Overwatch like every every episode at this point. But like, that's the one thing I like about that game is like they mm -hmm. just release a new character, they put it in the public testing realms, um, and then people get to find out how broken that character is. If something needs to be nerfed, or buffed, it's not that good. Um, I really like that, and I feel like that's what we kind of got with Banjo. We just got the surprise release because Sakurai is like, hey, let him just have it, and then we're going to get to quickly work on Terry, and then mm -hmm. from there on, we're just going to go ahead and see what we need to tweak about Banjo. Honestly, the direct in itself was a lot to unpack. Like, there was so there's much. There's a lot. On. Yeah, there, there's a lot. There's like, I know, I know we're just talking about Banjo, but. A like, lot. It, it, it was great to uh, hear like, Yeah, San, all the me gunners in the world. Yeah, are, like all of them. Like, yeah. Yo, bring up Sans yeah. really quick. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, Sans overshadowed everything. In yeah, the he really he's just, did. He's, and he's just a me costume. It's yeah. crazy. But I, I think, think the it's more of a meme at this point. It, it's, yeah, yeah. The implications behind like having an indie character like that be represented in uh, Smash is a big deal, even mm -hmm. though it's not an actual character. So I don't know, I guess it made a lot of people happy, especially since he's like super heavily requested character. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. there's a really good tweet that was out today that like said how like, um, Sans wouldn't have been created if Toby Fox did not play Earthbound, if, um, I forgot his name, the creator of Earthbound did not play Dragon Quest, which inspired Earthbound's uh, battle style. So like that's pretty interesting to see how like those three games have kind of influenced one another and those three games are in smash and it just goes to show like the power of smash is literally unlimited like yeah it's, whatever, whatever you want it is in this game like i'm serious like it's already a meme among, amongst the meme everybody always says it like if you would have definitely tweeted out a picture of like sans and and shovel knight and and snake and i don't know and joker in the same game i would and banjo you, and banjo i would have <laughs> yeah. told you like yo man your yo. Are the, the greatest Everyone's been wanting Banjo for a long time, and not only that, I ended up getting my two favorite characters. I got a hero, uh, Dragon Quest character being represented, and now uh, Banjo, which mm. is a series I grew up with with my sisters um, growing up playing those games with them. So I thought that was like this direct, the last direct. This one most specifically was probably one of the more like better directs in a long time. We had a lot of um, new information being released. Mm -hmm. And in general, with the whole Terry Bogard uh, being released in Smash Ultimate 2, I'm not too familiar with the, the fighting series that he's from, but I mean, I think he still looks pretty cool. Yeah. I know a lot of fans were kind of like, yo, that's pretty hype, especially uh, I feel like a lot more of like the 90s mm -hmm. older, you know, people are going to recognize a little more who he is. Mm -hmm. and, and it's cool. I think you know, he's unique. I wasn't too crazy excited for him or anything, but yeah, I, I literally with Banjo and Dragon Quest, that was already like, okay, like, I couldn't have asked for anybody else. The only other person I would want in there would be, like, Sora. Of yeah. course. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, let's, we'll get to that topic, well, though. We, yeah. 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 <laughs> we got a full time so on that. About. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about Terry, actually. <laughs> I kind of feel like this is the one time that Sakurai kind of got to write his own little love note to the community. There's kind of a really famous anecdotal story that Sakurai put out where 
<laughs> Before he started developing Smash, he was at the arcade in Japan playing uh, King of Fighters, and which is uh, you know the series that well Terry's from Fatal Fury, but which extended into uh, King, King of Fighters. You get the idea. Uh, but uh, um, you know he was playing King of Fighters at the Japanese arcade, and the way that it's set up, it's very much reminiscent or not reminiscent, but like you know very similar to some of the back-to-back -back setups that we have now at high-end tournaments where you don't actually see your opponent that you're playing against until you look on the other side of the screen in the console. So he was giving some like other player the beatdown in an arcade and he, while playing King of Fighters and he realized, oh, the person that I was playing against is like this young kid that didn't know what he was doing. And I really ruined the experience mm. for him. So why don't, you know, always in the back of his mind while he was doing and developing Smash, he always wanted to make a game that kind of catered and championed that, that player that, he beat at the arcade so kind of going full circle taking the inspiration of smash and being able to embody that spirit into a uh, character that's being oh. added as dlc yeah. yeah there's even like a lot of mechanics in king of fighters that are present in smash too there's not even just going from that story like even from the gameplay of smash there's references to king of fighters so yeah it's like it surprised me at first that i figured they would go for a more like really popular and like uh requested character as the dlc spot but the more i think about it i think it just makes a lot of sense and uh it, it uh it's another one of those characters that like references an old game that a lot of people may not <laughs> know about and maybe bring more attention to it and make it more hype if i did in the game so, yeah i'm excited for him i so, so, yeah. so yeah i i think the snk or people might have known like way back then like snk play more was like a company that used to rival Capcom back in the, the arcade days. Like, you had Street Fighter, and then you had King of Fighters. And those two games always were, like, to talk about the arcade cabinets, for sure. And, and not only that... And then like, Metal Slug came around. And then, and then the, yeah, and, then, and I tell people, like, like, me growing up as a kid, you know, I had my Game Boy on me all the time, but, like, once in a while... I, I if, you, look, if you're from SoCal, and if you happen to remember this, my fondest memory growing up as a kid was going to the old spaghetti factory, the one on Sunset. Here in SoCal, the one in Sunset, not the one in Duarte. Um, and I would beg my grandfather for whatever pocket change he had to just give me quarters so I could play Metal Slug while I'm waiting to go eat spaghetti at this really cool like restaurant called Old Spaghetti Factory. Um, but that was my relationship with SNK. Like that's how I grew up playing Metal Slug and finding out what SNK was, and then King of Fighters. Um, everybody can always remember Capcom versus SNK two. That was like a really big game way mm -hmm. back in the day. Um, and SNK honestly has SNK has a lot of history in the FGC alongside Capcom and everybody mm -hmm. at this point kind of knows like Smash is kind of a celebration of a lot of video games now it's not it's just transcended more than just Nintendo it's now video games as a whole and the SNK like arcade cabinets those were definitely fondly remembered of like I like I said I remember playing Metal Slug X for like practically two dollars of whatever my grandpa's pocket change to play that game and having so much fun even though you die in one hit, it was it was literally the precursor to Cuphead. If you guys, if anybody has ever played that game, like, it, it was the precursor yeah. to Cuphead. The game is wild. Yeah, you know what's also really crazy too? The fact that Nintendo is working with you know other uh, huge companies. Obviously, Banjo was mm -hmm. used to be owned by Rare Games and stuff, and now it's, they've you know they were bought out or whatever from Microsoft. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think it's really cool that it's kind of expanding Nintendo's horizons in a way because usually Nintendo doesn't really work with a lot of other you know like uh you know like other gaming companies and stuff in general so i think it was really cool that this like that they've reached out they made the connections they made it happen that was one of the biggest reasons why they were like oh we're gonna have problem problem with like licensing to get banjo yeah. and stuff yeah. so i think that was really really awesome that nintendo's kind of branching out and especially too with overwatch like we were saying oh my god the camera um <laughs> that would be crazy like i was i was literally even thinking like what if we uh if they were like to work with like blizzard or, or somebody or whoever yeah. and then all of a sudden you know we have thrall from world of warcraft and and, and smash bros <laughs> like imagine how like this game is actually the, the fact that it's grown and it's this uh historical of a game now it's actually crazy like what other game do you have where you can have like all your favorite people and fighters and characters and different games coming together in one smash universe like it's sick yeah. <laughs> mega man is fighting <laughs> mario it's broken <laughs> but uh yeah dude yeah uh, one, one thing i, I want to ask and like get, get the Ooh. opinion on our little panel here for um <clears throat> do we feel like Sorry. making fans a costume <laughs> instead of its own unique character is a cop-out 
mm. from a development <laughs> standpoint. It's I, I I think it's more like uh okay, so he's he's obviously really popular, but he's not the one that they want for the last slot, but they recognize how popular he is, so they make him a really good <laughs> costume. And just having right. him in the game first is like a stepping stone to be in the game like later. That's how yeah. I feel about it. I, I, so I, I, even if he's not in this version or like this game, he's like oh he's already been like a meat costume, he's really popular, so there's a chance that you get some more representation in it. Mm. Yeah. Um, At the very least, it's better that they, uh, you know, because they did similar instances where they made characters that want that people wanted to be in the game as me costumes, only they looked very, like, uh, about the worst case scenario in terms of making them kind of feel like the character. This is kind of the one time that the uh, me character or the me costumes have actually looked like the character that they were supposed to represent instead of a, a me cosplay in that, uh, that character kind of, uh, you know. I, I kind actually, of... the cosplayers make it look better than the what Nintendo did to the me costume, <laughs> the the me costume overall. Yeah, I kind of like that they did put him as a as a me costume. The one thing that I've been talking about with everybody was like, I think there's also a testing ground for like Sakurai and Nintendo to also see how the community responds to like, do you want to buy extra music in the game, that kind of deal, you know, and the high quality of like DLC. I think that's for sure like. I, I, everybody wants like extra uh, extra costumes. Like that's the one thing everybody wants. Like everybody wants an alternative costume for Joker. Everybody wants an alternative costume for like Peach, right? Where she's like in her yeah. Riker gear or whatever. Um, people want like other costumes for like multi purposes, basically. Like 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 Street Fighter and all the other fighting games that have extra colors and extra costumes. And not only that, like music. I think this is a really good like testing mm -hmm. the waters to see like how the fan base. Would like how much? How far would they really go to pay the seventy-five cents to get an extra song plus a bonus like me costume? I honestly wouldn't mind paying like five dollars and I get a set of new yeah. colors for new characters and a song on top of it. Like that's a really good deal. Even, yeah, even Sakurai even said it himself. Like seventy-five cents for a song is really cheap. Like it's really cheap. So, like, especially in today's world where like everybody just buys Spotify and music services. So I'm I'm really I think this is like. For sure, a, a small thing, but when you think about it, it's a bigger in the broad sense of like, mm -hmm. hey, maybe Nintendo really wanted to see how much people. Were I hope they that. take it there. I yeah, hope and, they I really do too. Because, <laughs> and even with season two DLC, oh, right, like, like that's that brings a whole new chance for everything to be coming out. Like for sure, we could be seeing co extra colors, extra costumes, extra <laughs> music, a lot of stuff, especially for season two DLC. Now that we know that season one is like almost almost at the end we just have one more character and then season two will probably happen like much later um <clears throat> in terms of like everything else honestly i was really excited for i, I know this is not smash related i was excited to see um zone of the chronicles definitive edition i'm yes i'm, I'm, glad, uh. I'm, yeah, I'm glad we're getting that game I, I talked about how like i feel that that's one thing that monolith software could be trying to release is just another xenoblade in terms of like remastering the original because i felt like that game really needed to be remastered i'm really excited for animal crossing Oh, yes, my. Animal Crossing! <laughs> Looks yeah. so I'm good. I'm, Did I'm you guys see the pole vault? Do you guys oh, actually, that was probably one of the best parts of the Last Animal Jedi Crossing reference. drag. <laughs> But uh, I, I'm most excited for Link's Awakening because I'm old school like that. Link's Awakening yeah. is, uh, my opinion, the definitive in storytelling uh, or the uh, the pinnacle of storytelling in the Legend of Zelda series. So that's uh, that's what I'm hyped for. Uh, A whole new generation gets to experience uh, that that whole entire mind trip. No spoilers. And, and Strides is excited for nothing because he's just like Strides. He's like, no, man, no Persona 5 in, in, the, in the Switch. I'm not excited for anything. I am Strides. Yeah, we had a lot of announcements. What else did we have? I know we had an RPG game being released too. Um, um, I think yeah. it was like a, a remastered uh, edition of like a previous of a series that's already been out, obviously. So mm -hmm. that looks really fun. I I haven't played it. I think it's called like something of mana, uh, oh, yeah, 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 trials yeah, yeah. trials of mana or something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's an old it's an old like if you've ever played um. Is it, is it an extension of that Secret of Mana game? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It okay. is like it is in the same vein. Hell yeah. Um, but, well, it looks really cool. Yeah, I, and, I'm, and I'm glad. Like the one thing like evident to take away from the Nintendo Direct for sure that like people might be wondering is like. Hey, where's Metroid Prime 4, Bayonetta 3? Um, people probably wanted to see some news about the next Zelda game, which I'm pretty sure... Pikmin 4. Pikmin 4. Um, yeah. There's, like, a lot of things that were kind of missing, but I feel like Nintendo won't say that until, like, the beginning of next year, because, once again, I always tell people, like, this is a direct where they want to hype up people 
and it was like for the, the the Christmas season, like releasing Banjo and having Terry out by November um, means that people who buy the Switch, who get the Switch, the new Switch, especially because there's two of them now, um, they'll be able to have like pretty much four characters if they buy the pass, a bunch of great games all together, and then way more to come. I always tell people these Nintendo Directs seem to happen every season, so I'm pretty sure we won't be getting another one until like January, December. So that people who've already gotten their Switch from, like, you know, Santa... Or probably two for one in November when Terry comes out, though, I would think. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be a Smash thing, yeah. but I feel like, the, to put it on a safer bet, like, I really think we're going to be getting, um... We're going to be getting another, like, one... I uh, just, just a general one, for sure, like, at the end of the year. Uh, but yeah. on, honestly, I'm glad they released Banjo. And for those of you guys wondering, we're going to quickly wrap up this topic, but, like... We still have yet to have seen Banjo, like, poor priority happened this weekend. We had DreamHack Montreal... We mm-hmm. haven't heard anything about any of the banjos aside from Japan, but we can get more into that later. Um, <laughs> on, honestly, the character is going to be explored, and I'm excited to see what the character brings in terms of the meta. Like I've, I've always been yeah. an advocate for more character buffs than nerfs. This current patch did not have much, if anything. There was like barely uh, just like a few fixes. <laughs> so, I, I think the biggest, yeah, uh, the biggest winners uh, or the biggest losers of the uh, patch. Is going to be the BC uh, Smash community because they have to deal with Big D and now uh, Ice Climber's got a very broken strategy yes. back with Nanakin Ledstrump. Ledstrump. The Ledstrump. biggest, <laughs> the biggest winner of the uh, whole entire you know patch in the Nintendo Direct was Sakurai being able to show that he plays with two controllers at once. So uh, Sakurai is broken. Don't try to play him in Smash. <laughs> you know it, that's it is what it is. But Sakurai the God. So biggest winner Sakurai on my end. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Definitely. Um... But I'm I'm really happy. Honestly, like Banjo's out in the wild. We're definitely gonna be mm-hmm. seeing. He had a, like here in SoCal, like everybody had a lot of fun playing the character. So we'll see how things happen in week two. Um, <laughs> they really have s- you guys played him? He's so I, fun. I, 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 I don't I, know I, what it's just like pessimistic energy. Like I'm I'm literally so hyped for I'm, him. He feels so good. Uh-huh. He's perfect in this game. I'm so hyped that he actually happened. Like. I I actually cried the day uh, Hero was announced with Banjo together. Like I just think he was just not. I was expecting a little bit of a disappointment mm. to be on to be honest. But like I said, I just feel like he was perfectly implemented. They used like his tool set, everything, just like the game series Kazooie pooping out the eggs, you know, the grenades, <laughs> stuff like that. Like it's just so fun. I'm I'm really surprised. Like I'm kind of hearing not like pessimistic reviews from you guys or feedback but a lot of people just are like wow like the i, I don't hear i don't see anybody complaining about banjo if that makes sense like n- everyone pretty much seems happy with him they're not complaining about him like they all were mm-hmm. hero oh let's ban hero or, this or and whatever so. nowadays, yeah yeah exactly so it's like the, this dlc character doesn't feel like a dlc character at all like he just feels like he's been a part of smash for a while and i think um, they did a beautiful job with him, and and Sakurai too, doing the little gahoot like that, like Banjo did. I was like, let's go. He's too powerful. Sakurai's broken. I'm telling yeah. you, he's broken for sure. I'm, I'm curious to hear strides. What what what's uh. what, what were some things like uh, before we close that? Because we've all said our stuff. I'm curious to hear from you, strides. Uh, what's your, yeah, what's, your strides? what's your mindset on this Nintendo <laughs> Direct? I feel strides. like something happened to him. All right, GGs. All right, let's go back to the segment then. <laughs> GGs. Right, we'll figure that out before we come no, back. <laughs> yeah, we'll come back. I feel like Strides has been talking. He's like, what's going on? Solid uh, points for Strides right there. Good yeah, good dude. work. I was like, he's been quiet. <laughs> Something's up with Strides. All right, man. Well, when we come back, we're going to get to a quick uh, quick little ad break here. But when we come back, hopefully we'll find Strides and uh, we'll see where that